Extreme 3D Snails on a Leaf Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a very cute little snail on, or well, snails, there's two of them, little snails on a leaf nail art design. If you follow my art page, you may know that I have a love of snails, which is kind of a weird thing because most people like snails, really? Snails? But yes, snails, and I have used them in art uh, three times. I've done three paintings of snails with various other objects. I like to incorporate them in a lot of my paintings. And doing a snail design on a nail has been something that has been on my bucket list for so long. The main problem I had was finding the perfect little, sh little, little seashells. And eventually I was, every time I was at a beach, I was always looking for my little snail, my little snail nail shells. And then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go through, I've got shells from when I was like four and took a trip to Mexico. I'm just going to see what I have. And then I found them, which is just, why didn't I start there? Anyways, I love this. I think they turned out adorable and they definitely fulfill my need for a little snail nail art design. I hope you guys like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So to start with, I'm just going to begin with an overlay of clear acrylic. I didn't want anything too distracting per se in the background. I wanted to keep it pretty simple. Not much of it shows really. It's just like a touch right by the cuticle. Most of it is covered up by that wonderful leaf, so you really don't have to worry too much about the background at all. So you can pretty much do whatever you like here. I would stick with something pretty neutral, either like a brown or a darker green, clear, white, black, you know, something that's not going to be too distracting. So just start with that clear overlay and then file it into shape. I'm using a pretty coarse bit to start with here just to get rid of anything that's any lumps, bumps, or imperfections, so that I always used to say. Just get rid of all, get rid of any bulk there and then go over that again with a, a much finer bit to really make sure that the surface is nice and smooth and has a nice velvety texture. So now on a nail form backing or like a, a May, uh, what a packing slip or anything that's like sticker paper basically except you don't want to actually use sticker paper because a lot of times with stickers like uh like sticker book stickers there's little cuts right around where all of the little stickers were and so then when you're sculpting on top of it you're going to end up getting some tearing and some problems and it's not going to go so well so try to find something that doesn't have those little indents where all the stickers were so, like I said, on a nail from backing, we're going to be sculpting the two halves of the leaf. Don't try to do the whole leaf in one in one bead or in one go at it. Try to do it separately. It's just going to go a little bit easier. It's easier to pick up. If you mess up one side, you still have, you know, one side that's good. Once they start to turn matte and you can pick them up with your brush, go ahead and do that. So pick it up and then sort of roll it off onto the nail so that it does kind of stick up and feather a bit at the edges, but it... So you want that center line to be right down the center. And the shape that we're doing for these leaves, it's kind of like a long teardrop. So it's nice and rounded at the top and then comes to a really skinny point. So then after you have one side laid down, pick up the other half of your leaf and place it on the nail so that it aligns up. Sorry, I'm kind of going off the, off of it a little bit. There you go. And like I said, keep it so it's kind of feathery and looks, looks leaf-like on the edges. And then with a bit more of that green acrylic that you were using, add just a little stem to the leaf right at the cuticle area, just like that. So as you can see, really the only part of that background that shows is right along the cuticle or if you look at the nail from the side. So now to make your snails, we're doing this in layers. The first layer of your snail you're going to want to do with a darker color, medium dark brown, kind of a dark gray would work. You just want it to be a pretty dark color is kind of what you're going for. So sculpt your two snails, little bodies, make sure that they are appropriately sized for your shells and then cut off some pieces of thread. So you're going to need four of these total, two for each snail, or four of four total for each nail so eight of them so just cut them off and then you're going to want to add the tentacles to your to your snails so there you got the lower tentacles which i attached with just a touch of cover pink acrylic and i'm going to be adding a much bigger bead of cover pink so the reason that you're using cover pink is because it's not completely opaque which is what you want so that darker color that you added for that base layer shows through in kind of a foggy foggy appearance so you can see it more like on the edges less so in the middle and then it kind of fans out then poke two holes in your snail's face that sounds really horrible for the upper tentacles so then after you have those two holes in there pick up those other two pieces of thread and attach them down you can if they don't just want to stay there which they may or may not depending on your acrylic and how fast it's setting and all of those great little details either add a touch more of that cover pink acrylic in the hole so that the thread will stay or a little bit of nail glue whichever you prefer me personally both options kind of are dreadful so choose whatever one works better for you i went with the acrylic option but as you can see that doesn't always work out so great and it doesn't matter if all of your tentacles are straight up or going in the same direction or even any of that because they're so fluid and they're so I don't know they 
move on their own accord. So they don't really need to match. So then attach your snail shell with more of that cover pink acrylic, kind of blend it together with a bit more, just kind of keep working on it until you're happy with your snail shape. The whole thing with a snail is that he has, he's so squishy that he, there's a lot of options there. They don't have to, there's not many rules you need to follow when you're making a snail. So after you have that first one done, go ahead and repeat the exact same process to make your other snails. So start by chopping off four little pieces of thread and then attaching them. Attach the first two to the face that pretty much go straight forward uh, parallel to the nail. So the first two just kind of are going straight forward. So those ones are easy to lay down. You don't have to mess around with attaching them with glue or acrylic in any sort of funky process like the upper two. So those ones are easy peasy lemon squeezy. So just go through, like I said, same process as the first nail. Just go through. And they also, with the snail, you want to kind of blend out that cover pink a bit farther than you did with the brown. So just kind of extend it out a little bit more. Then attach the upper tentacles with a bit more of that cover acrylic or nail glue. Whatever works best for you. And when you're picking out the color of your thread, try to pick out one that's a complementary color or a similar color to the acrylics that you're using to sculpt your snail. As you can see, mine is a little bit more of a golden color it's a little bit different but it, as long as it's uh, somewhat close it's good enough the closer you can get obviously the better i just whenever i need thread i go through my sewing drawer which i don't sew so it's weird i have a sewing drawer but i go through my sewing drawer and i try to find out or try to find the best color of thread that i have and sometimes it works out really well sometimes it doesn't i never shop to get thread so I'm always doing this when I'm like, oh, I need thread for this. So anyways, trim off the excess thread for the tentacles. And then with some green paint, I'm going to go through a darker green than what I used for the leaf. And I'm going to be adding my details to the leaf. Now you could have done this prior to sculpting your snails, which would make it easier in the fact that you wouldn't have to draw out all of the little veins on your leaf around the snails. But then you would have also had to really made sure that it was top coated well before you're sculpting on top of it, or you're going to mess up all of your paint details. I like to just kind of do things sometimes you may think of it as a hard way but I like to do all of my acrylic stuff on a design and then do all of the painting for whatever reason that's just kind of my process it's not really a good way to do it or a bad way it's just the way I like to and then with diluted brown paint go through and add some of the details on your snails so they have look like a couple polka dots almost on their backs and if you can look at the snail pictures there's so many different varieties of them that you can really have some freedom here add some highlights on them with a couple dots of white and just kind of make them a little bit more detailed and give them a little bit more texture with the paint. And then add a little bit of a shadow around them with a black outline. It doesn't take too much, but you just want to make sure that they really do stand out against the background of the whole thing. Then apply some matte top coat over your leaf. You don't want the leaf to look shiny, which is kind of weird because leaves usually are a little bit shiny, but you want to make sure that stays really matte. And apply gel sealer over the background and over your snails. You want your snails to be the shiny element in here. You want your snails to really glisten and look slippery and wet and slimy. So make sure that those snails really do shine. And that is it. I hope you guys like this as much as I do. Like I said, I have a, a deep love of snails and there's been a couple different vacations I've been on where I've been visited by a snail, which sounds weird, but I love them. So I hope you guys like them as much as I do and please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see them and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.